Hello, it's Victoria from Coastal Themes, and in this video I'm going to be talking about Webflow versus Framer. It's a very common question we get asked here at Coastal Themes, and despite the fact that we have a lot of Framer themes available, as well as Ghost themes, we also acknowledge that there is definitely a space for Webflow, depending on what you're after. So I'm going to be covering com some of the common questions we get asked, and some common areas you can look at if you're comparing and deciding whether to go with Webflow or with Framer. So let's start with the user interface. This is quite a big decision maker of whether you go with Webflow or Framer. It also depends on how experienced you are generally. So we are currently looking at the Webflow interface. You can see initially it's quite intimidating. Maybe it's the dark mode, maybe it's the quantity of content on the page, but it has a lot of the things we're familiar with if you've worked with Framer, your, your standard page navigator. CMS collections, e-commerce pages, which we'll get to shortly, and your normal layout navigator. So this controls your layers and you can go in and edit each one. When you start to edit content, this is where your expertise and your knowledge might either pose a steeper learning curve or not. So starting with the styles panel, we have style, we have settings, and we have interactions. In the styles panel, we have things like layout, if you aren't familiar with a typical kind of HTML, CSS structured site and the terminology associated with that, things like block, flex, grid, none under display might confuse you. Whereas on Framer, these terms are provided to you in a lot more of a friendlier way. Even when we look at sizing, we have a lot of icons with no description. Um, you can start working with things like ratios, and the overall user interface on this side of things could get quite confusing if you aren't familiar with the terms. When we head into settings, you can see here, it gives you things like IDs, custom attributes. If you're not really sure of these, this learning curve will definitely be a lot steeper. When we get into the interaction section, getting around Webflow's interactions initially is quite a lot more difficult than Framer's interactions. Framer's animations are a lot easier to set up, on Webflow, you need to be happy going in, seeing a lot of options and knowing which one to select yourself. If we jump into Framer, we can see the user interface from the get-go is a lot friendlier. We've got our pages navigator layers like we have in Webflow. We also have assets and that is very easily accessible. Whereas on Webflow, if we quickly jump back, we have components. Components are a lot more complex to start working with on Webflow, I would say. On Framer, the styles panel is a lot more approachable. We have terminology that is a lot easier to understand if you've never coded before. And in addition to this, there are loads of quick tutorials like on the Coastal Themes channel, which will help you get things done quickly and easily if you are just starting with Framer. Whereas if you're just starting with Webflow, a lot of the tutorials are longer and it just takes a little bit longer to learn. However, when you do learn Webflow, when you know your way around it, it becomes a very, very powerful tool. When we look at the design capabilities on Framer, it's very similar to Figma. Lots of people who work in Figma who are ready to begin prototyping their sites typically jump into Framer. The design-based features are modern. You can implement loads of pre-made designs and you can also tap into the Framer marketplace to find themes and templates, which will probably give you the design and layout you are after. One of my favorite features of Framer is their responsive design. So I can edit things on one breakpoint and see it apply across the rest. And overall, when you start implementing some of their sections, they tend to come fully responsive. And that is a super great time-saving aspect to Framer, which you don't get on Webflow. If you jump into Webflow, you will have to jump between breakpoints to make sure that your components and your designs are scaling properly between each one. However, on Webflow, you are able to make more complex layouts. You can include a lot more interactions and animations if you are comfortable with working with custom code. Integrating custom code into Webflow comes a lot 
easier and overall more set up to support a professional website build. The CMS is more robust on Webflow. It gives you up to 40 CMS collections. Whereas on Framer, if we jump into the CMS, you are allowed up to 10 CMS collections. While you can add multiple fields, you can see importing content, exporting content, and managing content on a large scale isn't something that Framer is fully geared up to do. And then finally, we're going to talk about e-commerce, which a lot of the time is the deal breaker of whether to choose Webflow or Framer if all of the other factors aren't something that affects you and your decision. If you want e-commerce, your only option between these two will be Webflow. Framer does have some third-party kind of plugins coming through for e-commerce, but they aren't fully fleshed out. We personally haven't tried them yet, maybe in a later video, let us know if you're interested. And you will probably rely on building your designs and your kind of standard product listing pages, product detail pages in Framer. But when it comes to checking out, and managing that, you will have to push it to a service provider like Shopify, like Gumroad, like Lemon Squeezy. It won't support customer accounts, the ability to log in or track anything significant on that front. However, you never know, Framer could come out with e-commerce tomorrow and it's such a small company, it's growing rapidly and it's super exciting to see what they come out with day to day. So who knows, e-commerce could come out tomorrow. However, on Webflow, we have e-commerce built in. It is fully integrated and you can create your products, create your categories, add discounts, see orders, even do subscriptions. And you can make customer accounts, give your users the ability to log in. But again, massive learning curve and a lot more time required to set this up. You can also implement multiple payment gateways there's automatic tax calculations, custom shipping rates, kind of all the typical things you might see in Shopify e-commerce, but all on Webflow and a lot more customizable. So to wrap that up, we would say you should choose Webflow if you need a fully featured CMS, if you're looking for e-commerce functionality, if you want full control over design and functionality, are happy to integrate code and you're just happy with the more complex interface and terminology that happens over on Webflow. We definitely recommend this if you're building client websites professionally and you want complex interactions and animations. Framer, we would say, is perfect for beginners. If you want to get started quickly, you're ready to put live your agency site, your portfolio site, and you want pre-made components easily accessible to drop into your designs and you need quick support and just overall quick prototyping to occur, Framer is definitely one for you. If you're familiar with Figma and you're ready to start building for yourself, Framer is definitely the next step. And that's it. Those are the main things that we will touch on for Webflow versus Framer. If there's anything we missed out, anything you want to add in the comments, feel free to do so. And if you found this comparison helpful, please definitely like and subscribe to our channel for more Framer tutorials, ghost tutorials, and Webflow tutorials coming very soon. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.